Hi there, I'm Dr. David Wood. I'm the medical director at Advantage IR. I'm here to talk to you about knee joint osteoarthritis. That's that arthritis that millions of Americans have in their knee that causes agonizing pain and swelling that goes on for years. The, really, the only treatment is a total knee replacement, uh, but that's only done when the disease reaches its end stage. So there's years in the middle there where you're just trying to keep it from getting worse and trying to control pain. And that's the tough part because there is really no good treatment for controlling the pain of knee joint osteoarthritis. There's pain medicines, just Advil, ibuprofen, and there's knee joint injections. Now we know from uh, placebo controlled trials that knee joint injections don't work well. They don't, they really don't work. Uh, in blinded controlled trials, we, uh, we know that knee joint injections uh, have no significant benefit compared to placebo. So that really just leaves pain pills for controlling the pain of osteoarthritis until you're ready to get your joint replacement. So what is there for those millions of Americans, years of chronic pain in the knee, with no good solution for pain relief. At Advantage IR, we've got something new. We approach the knee joint in a uh, completely new way. New studies are showing that knee joint osteoarthritis is actually a uh, largely inflammatory disease. We know that there's a lining of the joint called the synovium. All joints have it. The synovium is usually a thin membrane that secretes fluid that lubricates the joint. When the synovium gets inflamed, it gets thick, it starts to secrete a lot more fluid, and it causes pain. How does it do that? Well, when the synovium is inflamed, it starts growing new blood vessels. That's called angiogenesis. And when new blood vessels grow in tissue, new pain nerves tend to grow as well. So you get a proliferation of blood vessels, and you get a proliferation of pain nerves. And I think you see where I'm going with this. That means more pain. And that, that proliferation of blood vessels in the synovium, that chronically inflamed synovium, releases chemicals called cytokines into the joint fluid. And it's the cytokines that cause cartilage destruction. And with more cartilage destruction and bone-on-bone -bone damage being done in the joint, the more inflammation the synovium gets. And so you get a vicious cycle of synovial inflammation, cytokine release, cartilage destruction, and more synovial inflammation. That vicious cycle just continues until the knee joint is eroded so much and the bone is damaged so much that the joint needs to be replaced. Studies have been done showing that if you target the inflammation in the synovium, you can significantly impact pain and bring about pain relief. Recent studies have shown that if you slow down the blood flow in the arteries into the joint capsule, the synovium, the inflammation significantly goes down and the pain goes away. So how do we do that? Tiny catheters are placed in the actual blood vessels leading into the inflamed synovium. Tiny particles are then injected into those blood vessels and those particles are very tiny, but they're big enough to get stuck, and they dramatically slow down the blood flow into the synovium. You do that, the inflammation goes away, you take away the inflammation, and the pain goes away. You take away the pain, and function improves, going up and down stairs, getting up, at, or sitting up from a chair, sitting down in a chair, um, pain at night while sleeping, all of that significantly improves if you take away the inflammation and the pain. So let's look at some pictures of what we're talking about. So on the left screen, we've got an MRI from a joint that has osteoarthritis. So maybe you can see that we're looking uh, at the front of the joint as if a patient was facing us and we're looking at the front of the joint. This is the joint space right here. This is the femur and the tibia, and this is the knee joint here and here. Now there should be more cartilage here. There's a little bit of cartilage right here, and you can see that there's none here. So this patient has pretty advanced arthritis and a lot of cartilage degeneration. Also a little bit of damage in the bone. What we're seeing here is uh, an MRI that shows 
inflammation very well. How does it do that? Inflammation shows up white. So look at all of the areas on the MRI that are white. And look at this over here, a lot of inflammation on the medial. This is the inside of the knee joint. This is the joint capsule on the inside of the joint uh, showing significant edema. This is the joint capsule on the medial side of the joint showing a lot of inflammation and swelling, and that shows up white on this MRI. So this is the, that inflamed synovium that we're talking about that's going to have a lot of angiogenesis, a lot of cytokine release, and causing a lot of the pain. Also, the white inside the joint space is fluid. Too much fluid is being produced. That tends to happen in inflamed joints can get swollen with fluid here. We're seeing that here and here. And this is that synovitis, that inflamed synovium that happens along the joint capsule. That's what we target. So let's look at an angiogram of the same patient. This is an arteriogram. So we've injected contrast dye in the arteries that run along behind the knee. This is the main artery, the popliteal artery that takes blood to the calf and ultimately to the foot. And it sends off these little branches to the joint space. So I've highlighted the branches to the joint in orange. So here's one here. And then there's a tiny one right here. And then there is a bigger one going to the inferior joint space right here. And so these are named genicular arteries that feed the inflamed synovium. And if we target these vessels and slow down the blood flow in these vessels, we can decrease inflammation and decrease pain. So here's that same patient. Now we have sent tiny catheters, imagine a catheter the size of an angel hair pasta, and we've sent them into those branches. Now let's look at this one. This is the bottom of that descending genicular branch that we saw. And when we inject contrast dye, we see what we call capillary phase blush in the inflamed synovium, kind of this dark haze that you see over the joint. Now we don't see any bones here because the Computers on our equipment have subtracted out the bones, leaving just the contrast dye that we inject in the arteries. So we see them, the main artery branches here and here, but we also see this kind of dark haze that's just capillary contrast moving through the capillaries of the synovium. Now we have slowed down the blood flow. After we take this picture, we slow down the blood flow into those arteries just a little bit. We, and this is a picture that we've taken after slowing down the blood flow. We see that there's still blood flow in the main parent artery, but that dark uh, capillary phase haze has gone away. That capillary blush has gone away. That's our goal. You take away that capillary blush, that's, that is uh, in, inflamed angiogenesis in the synovium. You take that away and you're gonna take away the pain. This is the, in the lower part of the joint, so this is the top of the tibia and the joint space is right here. And we've injected contrast dye in the artery to the lower part of the joint. You see all that capillary phase dark haze that's over the synovium. Now, after this picture, we slow down the blood flow in the artery. And then we take another picture and we see we still have blood flow in this main parent artery, but that capillary phase haze has gone away. So that's, that's it. We slow down the blood flow in these branches. Uh, that turns out to be about a one hour procedure. The patient is sedated. We enter the body at the groin, at the femoral artery, and we send these little catheters or like imagine a little angel hair pasta that you can navigate, that you can steer. We steer those into the relevant branches that we wanna target and we slow down the blood flow very safe for the joint. It doesn't kill any tissue. It doesn't harm anything. Um, and it does relieve pain. How much does it relieve pain? Let's take a look at the same patient. When this patient came in and we met her, she had a Womack score of 74. Now this is a symptom score that, uh, we, that comes about after the patient answers many questions about what kinds of pain they get with different activities. Uh, we've got activities like getting going upstairs, going downstairs, sitting in a chair, getting out of a car. And at night, do you have pain when you sleep at night? 
Do you have stiffness in the morning? So this patient's score was 74 at baseline. Now, a maximum score is 96. So if you were to answer the most severe end of the spectrum on every question, you would have a maximum score of 96. That would be the worst. So 74 is a very high score. That means a severe functional limitation from the pain of osteoarthritis. Now, after treatment, this patient, six weeks later, filled out another symptom score. And you can see that her score was 26 at the after six weeks, after six week recovery after our procedures. So her score had dropped down from 74 down to 22, which is a huge drop. You can see that she answered slight to most of the questions, slight pain, slight stiffness, and slight uh, decrease in functionality in these different activities. Uh, so this was uh, not a dramatic result. This was a typical result. A patient, a, a, a patient who is a good candidate for this procedure should have results that are comparable to this. So let's look at a fact sheet that we put together. Let's look at the results of studies that have been done on slowing down the blood flow into the synovium. So we call this procedure embolization of the genicular arteries. Embolization just means slowing down blood flow. And so let's look at this graph. This shows the results of Womack scores as well as VAS. VAS means visual analog scale. That's um, a measure of your pain from zero to 100. On a scale of zero to 100, how severe is your pain? And you could look at that as a uh, scale of zero to 10 as well. So if you were to stay on a, with 10 being the most severe pain and zero being no pain, um, the average patient in this study said that they had a maximum pain score of 80 out of 100, or you could look at that as eight out of 10. So just under 80 was the baseline in the visual analog scale. And in this study, the Womack score of the average patient was just over 60. And remember the patient we just looked at was over 70. So in this study, they took patients that had these scores, a Womack of just over 60 and a visual analog scale of just under 80. And they did the procedure where they slowed down the blood flow. And then they asked them about their pain at one month, three months, and six months. And you can see what their pain scores did. They went way down to just over 20. Uh, and then at three months, it was around 30 and stayed at around 30 at six months. This was one treatment. So we had a sustained significant relief of pain and a significant improvement in functionality uh, over six months after treatment. So those were good results. We know from this study and other studies that this treatment works, it works well, and it's a single session. So as, a side, as side effects, the procedure can cause an increase in pain and stiffness in the joint for about 24 hours, so just about 24 hours. Uh, then the uh, improvement starts to set in. So after 24 hours of side effects, the patient starts to feel the pain relief already at day two and beyond. So by one month, they've already reached their maximum benefit in pain scores and um, functional improvement. Um, the procedure takes about one hour. Patients are sedated. We do this with sedation. The patients usually are just totally asleep. Although you don't feel any, anything that we're doing there during the procedure, and some patients choose to stay awake during the procedure, and you could even watch what we're doing on the monitor. We watch you for about an hour after we're done and then let you go home. You may be a little sore at the groin where we puncture into the artery. Uh, for a couple of days and maybe a little bit bruised as well. So we are now offering this procedure, it's new. The products we use are not FDA approved for this use and there are still clinical trials going on to further define who the best patient is for this we, procedure. The, but what we do know now is that the best patient is uh, probably at early to middle of their course of osteoarthritis it's probably a little too late to try our treatment when the patient is end stage. That is when there's bone on bone, severe pain when walking and uh, severe swelling. What, we, what probably is a good candidate for our procedure is the patient who has a lot of rest pain or a lot of nighttime pain. Uh, that seems to be a predictor of success or of benefit. Also a patient who has not had 
osteoarthritis for many, many years, but is relatively early or in the middle of their chronic course of arthritis. We're also uh, doing an MRI on every patient that might be a candidate to make sure that we see ample synovial inflammation. In the end stage of osteoarthritis, there won't be much inflammation anymore as uh, significant bone damage has been done, uh, cartilage damage has been done, and the synovium is kind of burnt out, if you will. Why don't you come on in and talk to us about our treatment? You'll be in good hands with us. Thank you.